Oh Lord, we are very, very grateful for all you have done for us. Oh Lord, we are very, very happy and we say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. Oh Lord, I am very, very grateful. For all you have done for me, oh Lord, I am very, very happy, and I say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord, oh Lord, I am very, very grateful for all you have done for us, oh Lord. I am very, very happy, and I say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. Oh, Lord, I am very, very grateful for all you have done for us. Oh, Lord, I am very, very happy, and I say, Thank you, Jesus. As many as are grateful to what God has done for you, give him a praise offering. Oh, Lord, I am very, very grateful for all you have done for me. Oh, Lord, I am very, very happy. And I say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. Oh, Lord, I am very, very grateful for all you have done for me. Oh, Lord, I am very, very happy. And I say, thank you, Jesus. Think of what God has done for you. Today, yesterday, last week, last month, that you are grateful for. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, I am there for all you have done for me. Oh, Lord, I am very, very happy. And we say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. Oh, Lord. We are very, very grateful for all you have done for me. Oh, Lord, we are very, very happy. And we say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. Oh, Lord, I am very, very grateful for all. You have done for me, oh Lord, I am very, very happy, and I say, thank you, Jesus, and I say, thank you, Jesus, are you saying me, I say, thank you, Jesus, I am grateful, I say, Thank you, Jesus. I say, thank you, Jesus. Jehovah, you are the most high. Jehovah, you are the most high God. Jehovah, you are the most high. Lily of the valley. You are the most high God, Rose of Sharon. You are the most high, unchangeable changer. You are the most high God, light in the darkness. You are the most high, great shepherd. You are the most high God, life protector. You are the most high, great physician. You are the most high God, 
Jehovah, you are the most high. Daddy, you are the most high God. Every day, you are the most high. In our midst, you are the most high God. In our life, you are the most high. In our home, you are the most high God. Everywhere, you are the most high. In the morning, you are the most high God. In the noon, you are the most high. Even at night, you are the most high. When we are happy, you are the most high. Jehovah, you are the most high God. In our home, you are the most high. In our city, you are the most high. In our country, you are the most high. Jehovah, you are the most high God. If you have the breath of God in you, give the Lord God Almighty a clapping offering. Give him clapping offering. Give the Lord clapping offering. It's worthy of a praise. It's worthy of honor. It's worthy of adoration. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, King of Kings. Thank you, Lord of Lords. I worship you. I lift your name on high because you are the most high God. You are God who does what no man can do. Unchangeable changer is your name. You are the father for the fatherless. You are God who is always there. Compassionate God you are. I give you praise for who you are, for what you have done, for what you are doing, and for what you will do in our midst tonight, and for what you have begun to do. Be thou glorified. Be thou magnified. Be thou exalted, O Lord. Father, for what you did in the morning, to you alone be all the glory. And at this night, Father, for what you have set up on the table for us, for you have prepared a table for us tonight, table of healing, table of, of blessing, table of your favor, to you will be all the praise forever. Come and take preeminence in this place, O Lord. Govern your word by your power. Let your Holy Spirit have his free way and will in the name of Jesus. These are your people, Lord. Your word said, blessed are those who are hungry and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Father, we shall be filled tonight. We shall be filled to the fullness by the power of your word in the name of Jesus. Nobody here will remain the same in the name of Jesus. Your word will never return for it tonight. In the name of Jesus, to you will be all the praise in Jesus' awesome name. We pray. Amen. Amen. And amen in Jesus' name. You are welcome to the presence of God tonight. The God whom you have come to seek shall suddenly appear right there where you are, in the comfort of your home, in the corner of your house, in the comfort of your car. Nobody here will go empty-handed tonight in the name of Jesus. You are welcome to the presence of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Declare Psalm 92. Psalm 92, and let's look at verse number 8 here. Psalm 92, verse number 8. Said, but thou, O Lord, thou, O Lord, art most high forever. Thou, O Lord, art most high forever. Thou, O Lord, art most high forever. What does it mean? Meaning the Lord is forever exalted. He is the most high. And anywhere you find yourself tonight, in your heart, in your environment, declare loud and clear, the Lord my God 
is the most high forever. The Lord my God is the most high forever. The Lord my God is the most high forever in the name of Jesus. You know who can declare that? It is those who have seen the wonders of God. When you see the mighty acts of God, the Bible tells us that when Elijah and the prophet of Bar, when they come together in a contest, that who is God? Who is God most high? Who is God most high? Elijah told them, the Lord who answers by fire, let him be the God who is exalted forever. I pray over your life and my life that you shall be confident of your God, that your God, the God whom you are serving day and night, will show himself as the Lord who answers by fire. The prophets of Baal, there are many, about 400 or more than, they come together. Elijah said, since you are numerous, get yourself two bulls. Get yourself two bulls. Let the prophet of Baal choose one bull for themselves. Cause it. Open your Bible to First King chapter 18. Thank you, Holy Spirit. First King chapter 18. And we read from verse 23. Elijah said, get two bulls for us. Let the prophets of Baal choose one bull for themselves. Cut it into pieces and place it on the wood, but do not light it with fire. And I will prepare the other bull and place it on the wood, but not light it with fire. Verse 24. Said, then you may call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of the Lord, the God. The God who answers by fire, he is God. And all the people answer, what you say is good. I am praying for you, and I'm praying for myself, that the God who answers by fire shall be your God. The God who answers by fire shall be my God. Lift up your voice, declare before we go for that. Say, the Lord who answers by fire, let him be my God, the Lord who answers by fire. Let him be my God, the Lord who answers by fire. Let him be my God, the Lord who answers by fire. Let him be my God, the Lord who answers by fire. Let him be my God, the Lord who answers by fire. Let him be my God, the Lord who answers by fire. Let him be my God. The Lord who answers by fire. Let him be my God, the Lord who answers by fire. Let him be my God, the Lord who answers by fire. Let him be my God. I decree and I declare that every situation that enemy has said they do not understand your God. Every situation that is proving that who is even your God. Every situation that can make the adversary to mock your God. The Lord God of Elijah, God of heaven and earth, the only living God, shall show himself on behalf of everyone here tonight, on behalf of everyone tonight, that your case has get to the wall. You don't even know where to turn to. Unless God who answers by fire, answers by fire, the mocker will mock you. I pray tonight that the God who answers by fire will show up. It will show up, it will show up, it will show up, it will show up, it will show up for everyone here. In the name of Jesus. I am so excited about this God. I don't know why. Thank you, Jesus. In verse 24, then you will call on the name of your God. I will call on the name of my God. I will call on the name of my God. And the God who answers by fire. I hope, children, you are listening. And I hope you are getting everything you need to get. This is the demonstration, the season of demonstration of power. 
whether you are a student, you are, you are in elementary, in middle school, in high school, anywhere you find yourself, unless your God answer in your life by fire, nobody will believe you as a living God. And that is why you need to know the God you are serving. And you need to know that the Lord is the most high. Not they said he's the most high. You need to have an encounter with him yourself. You need to have an a, a unforgettable encounter. You need to experience God in a tight corner, in a corner where no one can change your mind. You cannot flip and flap between two opinions. You cannot do it today and say tomorrow, I don't think it's the most high. By Thursday, it's the most high. When they don't pay you, no paycheck, it's no longer the most high. When they greet you, God is most high. When they didn't say to you, it's no longer most high. You have to make up your mind. Elijah said, now let's begin. The Lord God who answers by fire. You know, many situations are confronting Christians today. There are still many more challenging situations. That is why we need to move, move away from elementary and move to perfection. Then Elijah said to the prophet of Bar, since you are so numerous, choose for yourself one bull and prepare it first. Then call on the name of the Lord your God, but do not light the fire. Give me the answer. He said, but do not light the fire. So what did he want them to do? He want them to perform a miracle. He want their God to show himself as a God who can hear voices. And he said, okay, prepare something. Now call upon your God. I want, you to, I want to prove to you that your God is a useless God. I am praying for everyone here that anyone who is consulting darkness to attack your life, they shall be disgraced with that darkness. In the name of Jesus, anyone who is consulting darkness to attack your family shall be disgraced with that darkness. In the name of Jesus. Anyone who is consulting darkness to attack any of our children shall be disgraced with that darkness in Jesus' name. Elijah said, prepare for yourself first because you are many. And you call upon your God. And the prophet of God said, we like that. And they took the bullock which was given them and they dressed it and call on the name of Ba from morning, even until noon, saying, O oh, Ba, hear us. But there was no voice, nor any that answer. May I let anyone here know that there is no power in anywhere else, except in the true God of history, the only living God. They call upon the name of Ba. They call upon his name because he's not a God. He couldn't hear. He doesn't have an ear. He could not speak. He doesn't have mouth. They call upon his name. But yet people worship him. Yet a lot of people followed him. Yet a lot of people prevail. Balished God. Today many people, they, they, they are just worshippers of God. Going from one place to another. Looking for a certain message. Looking for a certain place. Looking for a, a soothing discussion. They are just a worshiper of Ba. God that does not have ears. They call Ba from morning to night. But Ba did not answer them. I am praying over your life, over my life, that you will never bow down to a man made God. Say, I will never, never serve man made God. Serve man made I will never, never serve man made God. Serve my made, I will never, never serve my made God. Serve my made God. Is there any problem in my life that is commanding me to bow down to bar? You are a liar. Dry off in the name of Jesus. Any problem in my life, in my family that is directing me to bow down to an idol? You are a liar. Dry off. Dry off. Dry off. Dry off. Dry off. Dry off. Dry in the name of Jesus. 
Somebody say, my, my friend said, eh, I, I can try this. May you not try what will take you back to Egypt in the name of Jesus. Because they are not God. They are not God. Their worshippers is like them. The scriptures say those who make them, they are like them. They are a broken sister, broken idol. They don't have ears. Go and read Jeremiah 10. He talks about them a lot. Amen. So they call upon the name of Bah from morning to night. I decree and I declare that the power out of the enemy shall fill them woefully from tonight in Jesus' name. Any power out, anywhere the wicked are consulting in order to attack anyone's life here, that power shall disappoint them. There shall be no foils. There shall be no air for them. In the name of Jesus. You must arrest your, your you must arrest arrest her like that. You must owe them ransom in their wisdom. So let them call upon their God. So they call upon Ba from morning to night. And he answered them not a word. Did you see that? If anyone after you read this, you are still going about going from one shrine to another, call month or whatever, you are, you are looking for a God that doesn't have anything to offer you. Be a, with the disappointment like these people. May that not be our portion in Jesus' name. Both young and old, nobody should be looking for food power. Nobody should be looking for astrologer. Nobody should be calling Auntie Mary for their future. Who should I marry? Who is my husband? Show me the way. Anyone messing around is, is just looking for disappointment. May that not be anyone's portion here in Jesus' name. The only God you should call upon is the only living God who hears, the Lord who hears the groaning of the afflicted. They call upon back. He didn't answer them. You see why the money you send for, for, for sacrifice, money you send by this, by that, take it to this. You see why there is no, no changes. Because they are not taking it to the real God. They are not God. Don't let them lead you and say they want to read your star. Don't let them send junk into your email and say, click it. We can tell you. We can tell you your, your, your star. We can tell you what you should do. We can tell you which job you should do. They are broken idol. They don't have ears. It's all lies. He did not answer his worshiper. If he's a God, why can't he answer them? The Bible says, and they took the bullock, they do everything, and they call, and he did not answer them. They leap upon the altar. They do everything. He didn't answer them. In fact, 29, it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them. This is supposed to be the calling of every child of God. You're supposed to be mocking idol worshippers. You're not supposed to, uh, to join them. You're not supposed to fall into their snares and trap. You're not supposed to join them to worship idol. You're supposed to mock them. You're supposed to mock them like Elijah did. i supposed to mock them. You're not supposed to be magnifying it and say, see, see, it's a so, 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 and so. She doesn't pray like we pray. Go see answer. Which God answer? Elijah mocked them. Just one Elijah, one ratio 400 prophets of Baal. One ratio 400 prophets of Baal. And he mocked them. I pray tonight for everyone here that every activities of, of satanic prophets in the life of anyone here shall be cut off. Every hidden work of idol in the life of anyone here shall be cancelled. All their fathers shall be rendered null and void in Jesus' name. Their God shall fail them. As the bar fail his prophet, I decree and I declare that they, their power shall fail them. They shall consult oracle in vain concerning everyone's case here in the name of Jesus. And Elijah mocked them and cried aloud, they cry aloud and call upon your God. Either he's taking a nap or he's on a journey. Peradventure is sleeping. 
you must wake him. Elijah mocked them. Elijah know the God he is serving. We must know the God we are serving. You must not allow anybody to mock your God. You must be proud of this living God. I don't know about you. I'm so proud of this God. He can never, never say. He's the living God. He's God who answers. In, in, in the life of every one of his children by fire, he has answered in our midst. Just now that we finish prayer, he has begun to answer by fire. Glory to his name. And it came to pass, after they prophesied and prophesied, nothing happened to their life. So you are the one that just like, fission, fission. What, what did God say? What did God say? He prophesied to their life, nothing. You wrote me, you wrote me in sin. You wrote me in disobedience. They said it's grace, it's grace. Just de- declare prosperity. Catch it, catch it. Catch your husband. Catch it, catch it. How many husbands have you catch? It's not by power, nor by might, but my spirit, says the Lord. I pray for everyone here tonight that all the work of idolatry that anyone has done to destroy your life when you are little, when you don't know, every hidden work of darkness and idolatry shall be rendered impotent in Jesus' name. And it came to pass, when midday was passed, and they prophesied until the time of the offering of evening sacrifice, that there was neither void, nor any to answer, nor any that regarded. And Elijah said unto all the people, we are reading from the book of Second Kings, We're reading the book of First Kings, chapter 18, and we are now in first 30. And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. Mark that in your Bible. Elijah repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. It is important that we repair the altar altar of God in our life that is already broken down. We cannot just lay foundation on a broken altar. He repair the altar of the Lord. We must repair that which needs to be repaired in our life. We cannot just ignore it or build on it like that. Elijah knows the process. He repair the altar of the Lord. Whatever that needs to be repaired, our Christian life, our fasting life, anything alive that Holy Spirit said this needs to be repaired. Many attitude problems. People don't want to repair their attitude, but they want to build on that altar like that and expect God to be doing wonders. Elijah repair the altar of God. Elijah repair what has been damaged. Elijah repair what is not proper. And in as long as the altar of God has been repaired. Elijah now took 12 stones according to the number of tribes of the sons of Jacob, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. So Elijah built the altar accordingly, according to the precept of God. He repaired the altar of God. We need to repair whatever that needs to be repaired in our life. We need to repair our attitude. We need to repair our worship. We need to repair our prayer life. Anything in our life that we need to repair, we can't just ignore it and build on it like that. We might call on fire, fire might not come down. Elijah repaired the altar of God. And now, in verse 32, and with the stone he built an altar in the name of the Lord. Not he built an altar called Tower of Babel. He built an altar in the name of the Lord. And he made a trench about the altar 
as great as would contain two measures of seed. And he put the wood in order and cut the bullocks in pieces and laid in on the wood. See, the prophet of Ba, they didn't do that. They like wood, wood to the answer. Anything goes. They, we just say, all you need to do is you should learn how to prophesy. Just prophesy. Don't change your way of life. Don't, don't change your way of giving. Don't change your way of worship. Don't change your way of service. Don't change your way of, uh, of, uh, of serving God. All you need to do is just to learn how to worship, how to prophesy. You just prophesy. See? They keep on prophesying, prophesying. What happened? And with stone, he built an altar. Jesus is the chief cornerstone. Jesus is the stone that the builder rejected, that he become the chief cornerstone. Everything we are doing must rely on the love of Jesus Christ. Whatever we are building must be, be, be the, the foundation Jesus Christ has laid. Apostle Paul said there is no foundation that anyone can lay it again except that which is in Christ Jesus. And that is the foundation every one of us should build upon. So Elijah did it the right way. The altar that they have disorganized, maybe it was satin. Maybe it was satin stone they put there, or four stone. Elijah makes sure that he, he, peel, he put 12 stone according to what God ordained. We cannot give, do it less or do it uh, in, in excess. We can't do it less. We have to be accurate with what the way God said. The Bible says God is a spirit. God is not human being that see, we see. The Bible says God is a spirit. Those who we worship God, we worship him in spirit, in truth, so that we can receive in spirit and in truth. Anything you want to receive from God, you have to first receive it in the spirit realm before it's manifested in the physical. That's why sometimes when certain things manifested and you never believe for, for it, sometimes you, the intercessor or the leader God has placed of, uh, or in, your, in your midst must have stand in the gap and receive it in the spirit. And God distributed it to all the saints. That's why you must have a spirit-filled leader. You can't have a leader that you, you know better than them. That even we, we, your, your, a sister said they took her to a fellowship one day. And when she got there, she said, how did I get here? And the woman said, Shabi, you introduced me to prayer line. So I said I should bring you to here. And she said, ah, I'm afraid, though. I can't be part of this uh, fellowship. They said, why? And then uh, she was shaking. She said, please, uh, when she come to tell me, she said, please, ma, pray for me. I have been there. I don't know the effect, the place we have on me. I said, what happened? What happened there? Is the place that bad? Ah, she said, everybody I see there, they have bleached their skin. And the so-called the evangelist, the leader there, are hearing is touching the neck from the hair. That, in fact, I look at every one of them. There is no single person there that did not bleach their skin. And all of them are all, they are all, most of them, divorcee, this one, and she said, how did I get here? I didn't belong here. And they would say, oh, don't mind all those pretty cocoa people. God is not uh, interested in all that. It's your heart alone. It's your heart. Go and study the scripture. There is holy garment. There is holy word. There is holy appearance. Everything matters to God. Everything. He cares about everything about us. He cares about our garment. He cares about our appearance. That's why he's saying in the scripture, say, you must adore yourself with quiet spirit of inner beauty, not with braiding of hair or pearls or gold. Apostle Paul said it. Peter said it. If it's not real, they're not going to establish it like that. Elijah repaired the altar. We want to begin to speak and the fire of God back us up. We want to pray and fire back it up. We want to see the manifestation of God who answers by fire. We need to repair the other. If our own is pride, remove it. If our own is lack of thankfulness, remove it. If our own is the 
or, or anything, whatever it is. Elijah repaired the altar and he now called on God. There is no way you will put things in order and you will call on God and he will not answer. Then if God does not answer, then we are going to be making God a liar. We are as the scripture say, we, 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 by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie. In fact, 37, 36, and it came to pass at the time of offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am your servant, and that I have done all these things at your word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that these people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. He did not even pray for fire. He just said, I'm about to call you, Daddy. You see, the, the difference between regular prayer and the prayer of a real prayer warrior is that you know how to structure your prayer. You know the word is to use. You know what to tell God. You know how to plead your case. You know how to petition properly. That, Lord, I am not doing this thing. If I say, if you are, all the miracle Jesus did, he never did it to glorify himself. He will say, please don't tell anybody that I'm the one that do this. But all this miracle of carrying camera around, anything I do just will record me. Record me on my life. You invite some people and you don't put them live. You are going to be in trouble. They say, why you don't put me live? So what I'm doing, people don't see it. Those are organized miracles. Learn your lesson. Elijah did not pray for fire. Elijah just began to tell God, you know what? We are in a competition. This prophet of Baal, they have turned the whole Israel to idolatry. They have said people that you are no longer a God. But I am telling the people that all the Baals that they have is a dead God that you are the only living God. And I'm not here to glorify myself, but I am here so that people will know that you are the only God. You must know how to, put, how to plead your case. You must know how to present your case. And you know you are a covenant-keeping God because you are God of our father, Abraham. You are God of our father, Isaac. You are the God of Israel that you have said you choose Israel to be your possession. It's because the altar has been repaired. What God is looking for in a life, in a place, once he sees it, miracle follow. You don't have to conjure miracle. You don't have to have spring water, or a clinical water before anything. You don't have to send your water to, uh, to history and they bring it back for you from history before water begins to work for you. The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and they are saved. And the word of God says it shall come to pass that those who will call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved from any affliction, from any sickness. And before Elijah could even finish, then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stone and the dust and lick up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, when all the people saw what God of Elijah did, they fell on their faces. And they said, the Lord is the God. The Lord is the Lord. The Lord is the God. When the proper procedure to receive miracle, to receive blessing is already embarked on, it happens naturally. Because it will glorify God. That which will glorify God. That which will make your neighbor. That which will make your haters. That which will make those who belittle your God. That which will make those who, who did not have respect for your God. To say, aha, your God is the Lord. Your God is the Lord. God will do it in your life. To glorify himself. To glorify himself. To glorify himself. 
Say, oh God, my Father, oh God, my Father, show me the broken altar in my life. Show me the broken altar. Show me the broken altar in my life. Show me the broken altar in my life. Show me the broken altar and repair it. Father, show me the broken altar in my life and repair it. 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 And repair it in Jesus' name. Broken water can be someone's foundation. The scripture says the foundation be destroyed. What can the righteous do? And that is why the righteous need to call upon the Lord, the author and the finisher of our faith, and call upon him until he answered you. Not being tired and weary. Father, repair the broken water in my foundation. Repair the broken water in my foundation. Father, repair the broken altar in my foundation. If your mother is a wish, your grandmother is a wish, what, who are you? You're already a wish because you, you, you drink from the breast of your mother. Lift up your voice, Father. Repair the broken altar in my foundation. Broken altar in my foundation that is affecting my life, affecting my destiny. Father, repair it. Broken altar that is working against my life, working against my miracle, Father, repair it. Father, repair every broken altar of God in my life. Repair it, O Lord. Repair it, O Lord. Repair it, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. The word of God says, even though I pass through and I'm in the midst of trouble, the Lord will revive me. Lift up your voice, Father, revive me. Father, revive me in this idolatrous world. People are serving idols now. Their idols is not like a gay bar. The idols nowadays is technology. The idols nowadays is, show, is, is social media. Anything has become idol. Anything we spend time with more than our God. Father, let all the idols in my life, let them be broken to pieces. Remove idols in my life. Remove idols in my life. Remove idols in my heart. In the name of Jesus. Elijah, the man of God, did not say, don't you know I'm a prophet? I don't have to do anything. I will just start commanding. I will just start rebuking. Elijah know that God cannot be mocked. Whatever a man sow is what you reap. If you sow to the flesh, you reap to the flesh. If you sow to the spirit, you reap to the spirit. So Elijah know what it takes to reap things in the spirit. You can't sow to the flesh and expect to reap in the, flesh, in the spirit. Whatever a man sow, the Bible says that is what a man going to read. Lift up your voices and talk to the Lord. Oh God, my Father, repair my life. Repair my life. Repair my life. Repair my life. In the name of Jesus. Father, repair my life. Repair my children's life. Repair my life. Repair my children's life. In the name of Jesus. Father, repair my life. We don't have control of the foundation of where we come from. You cannot choose who is going to burn you. Neither can you choose the color you want. But when something that is unfavorable happens, it's only God who can favor you and correct it. Father, repair every false foundation. Repair the life of everyone here in the name of Jesus. The prophets of Ba, they call on Ba from morning to night. He never answered it. From today, that which we make anyone here to call upon God and God will not answer. Let such idol be exposed in Jesus' name. Let such irritable thing, let it catch fire in the name of Jesus. You know, I know the God I serve. I can tell you 100%. I barely call upon my God with, without him answer. And I give him all the glory for that. And that's why my God has little tolerance to, a, to anything called idol. He has a little tolerance. As soon as he sends it, he said, no, this has to be corrected before we can move on. This has to be removed. This can't be like this. That's why obedience is the key and humility. Obedience, humility. Obedience, humility. I pray that the humble ask to receive from God an obedient heart to continue to enjoy him. Everyone here shall receive it in the name of Jesus. Elijah called upon a true God. 
He is the only living God. He is God who answers by fire. That is the God I have come to tell everyone here tonight, that if you serve him the way you need to be served, if you, uh, if you honor him the way you need to be honored, if you, if you present yourself to him the way you need to present yourself to him, he said in his word, said, and thou will serve the Lord your God. Amen. You will serve the Lord your God. In Exodus 23:25, and ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread. Who is going to bless your bread? Is God. He said, You will serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and your water, and he will take sickness away from the midst of thee. I want to tell you that God is the one who blessed his people. When you serve him with all your heart, when you serve him with your everything he has given unto you, when you are of service to the Lord, he will, that sickness that will not allow you to serve him, he will take it away from you. That sickness that will not allow you to have concentration, that poverty. If you have poverty, you can't serve God. Because your worried will be on what I will eat, what I will feed my family. How do you think I can possibly concentrate in serving God? If, if I lack, he makes sure that I did not lack anything. He makes it as point of his duty to make sure that physically, spiritually, he takes care of me. And the same thing applies to your life. He said, taste and see that the God is good. Don't be anxious for anything. Serve God. Say, Father, give me ability to serve you. Father, give me divine ability to serve you more, more and more. Oh, utterly with humility. Yes, give me grace to serve you. You must be a volunteer at all times. You must be ready. Be on duty at every time. You must serve God, not grudgingly, not a... Why can't they call me? Why can't they tell me? Why can't they thank me? You must serve God without any reverse. You must serve God like Kilode, no fish any. Are you the only one? You must serve God. You need to see me just when, when I'm in there anywhere. They will say, is she the only one? I, I serve God with all my strength. I serve God without holding anything back. I give him all the quality of my energy. Because I know he's the one who has my being. You don't serve God grudgingly. You don't serve God partially. You don't serve God halfway. You don't serve God half hearted. You serve God all heartedly. Some people will be there sitting, and elderly, elderly people in the church will be sweeping, and they will be lifting their leg up and say, Mama, look at something here, Mama. And you don't know what keeps that Mama to be strong to that age. The person is serving God with humility. When they finish cleaning, sometimes they will, they, they, the pastor will call them and say, Ah, have you mopped this place? This place doesn't look clean. People that are serving God with humility will say, Ah, Daddy, let me go and take a broom. Let me sweep it again. But this day they will say, Ah, what is the meaning of this? I'm even managing to, to sweep. See the way they are talking to me. I quit. Let them be doing their thing. They want to serve God without doing it properly. You know, it amazes me when people are in the children's department. They will be there taking care of children, little kids. And when that child poo poo, they will say, go and tell the mom now. We are not here to change poo. Then what are you there for? What are you there for? You must learn how to serve God. When you are taking care of those little children, you are serving God. The pastor told us a story of a, 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 the children teacher in their church. There is this child among the children that have uh, autistic, and the child will be disto- like, like uh, running around the church. And normally, all other teachers will be saying, ah, the mother should come and say, oh, don't bring your troubled child here for us, oh, because we won't rest today. Oh. But there is this particular one who understands the meaning of service. She brings Rapa. Something to bag the baby. This child is around five years old. This woman would pet, pet the boy and said, my son, 
my son, come here, come here, I love you. He will put the child on his back. She will put the, that child of five years old on, on her back. She will tie it. She will be praying fervently for him that, that that spirit that is troubling you, God of Israel shall trouble your spirit. This woman, the, the boy will be banging the, the woman at the back, but yet this woman will back, he will back this boy as if it's his son. The mother, she will say, go back to church and listen. That demon that does not want you to listen, I, I join you to cast that demon out. Can we have people that can serve God like that today? Instead, they will say, this child should not be here. Where did they put the disabled child now? He should not be among the regular children. To be speaking glamour. The woman will bag the, 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 the child to give the mother relief. She will do it wholeheartedly. She will not be able to listen. All she will be able to do is to focus on this child that needs special care. And lo and behold, Year passed, year passed, and the boy, eventually somebody came to take him away to abroad so that they can have, see that, oh, in abroad, this kind of thing can be taken care of. And eventually, the mighty hand of God intervened in this boy's life. And after some years, he has spent like 25 years in, in America, the boy came back home, and he built a house for his parents. And he said, what of our teacher in church? What of, what of Auntie Taye in church? He said, Auntie Taye is still in church. Oh, you didn't forget your mommy, your mommy in church. Yes, he said, I didn't forget her. She, she, she always put me on her back. I remember, I remember her. She liked me. And she, the boy said, God placed it in his heart to build a house for Auntie Taye. None of Auntie Taye's child can build a house. They are not where to do. But this boy came all the way back home and built four bedroom flats, big ones, four, four of it for Auntie Taye. The Bible says, and thou shalt serve the Lord your God. People are serving God grudgingly today. People are serving God with you, buying donuts for them, buy cookie for them, buy kerosene for them, before they can serve God. What kind of service is that? Nobody is going to beg you. If you want to serve God, serve God, because I'm not going to be the one to reward you. He said, thou shalt serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless you. There is a blessing in serving God. Anywhere you are, anything you are, serve God. This is going to be the survival of the fittest. Serve God wholeheartedly. Make sure your children, they, no matter the need in their life, teach them how to serve God with their life, with their talent, with their gift, anywhere they are. When you are singing, you are serving God. When you are feeding the poor, you are serving God. When anything God has placed in your hand to do in order to, to represent him, and he shall bless you for it. And he shall bless you and bless your bread. You know, when the blessing of God is upon your food, the little you have will continue to increase. And your water as well. The water you brought before the Lord, the water you have at home, the water, it will bless your water. And it will take sickness away from your midst. There is a way sickness enters into someone's body. When you open door or ancestor open door anything, sickness, affliction. But there is power that will take it away from your body when you learn how to serve God. When you learn how to humble yourself and serve your God and do it as if it's no man's business. And it will take away sickness from you. And you will destroy that sickness that wants to destroy you. Say, oh God, my Father, oh God, my Father, show me where I can serve you more. Show me where I can serve you more. Many of you, you can see serve God more than what you are doing. The Bible says, from those who have, from those who don't have, it shall be taken and given to those who have. Before that person begins to do what you are doing, you better ask God, please use me, I beg you. Lord, use me now. Use me, I'm begging you. Don't let me be useless. Use me. Use me. Let me serve you. Anyone that doesn't serve God, they serve bar. They serve idols eventually. Yali Kalama Sindaya. That he please use me. So use my house. Use my children. Use me, oh Lord, with all humility. Everything, Lord, about me. Use it. Show me where I can serve you more. Show me, oh Lord, disciples disciples around me that I can show the love of Jesus Christ to. 
Father, show me, O oh Lord, to serve you more. Help me to serve you more. Holy Ghost, open my eyes to see we are, there is need for service. In the name of Jesus. Because your, your healing, your blessings are attached to it. Thou will serve the Lord, your God. Many people run from one place to another because they don't want to serve God. Or they are serving God in an incorrect way. And they correct them. They don't want to listen. They don't want to listen. I know what I'm doing. I just want to do it this way. Little thing. They don't want to listen. But they want to, they want to serve God. You can serve God if you can humble yourself. Lift up your voice, Lord. I need to serve you. I need to serve you. Because there is affliction in my life that you must take away. There is sickness that I don't want again in my life. Lord, please. Please use me. Help, use me. Many people have cried to God that give me soul or else I die. Give me Scotland or else I die. What are we crying for? Not every day will be crying. You buy a car for me. Buy a motor for me. Buy out for me. Me, me. What for what? What do you need all those things for? Where you are going now? You don't take all those things, all those things away with you. The Bible says wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart is going to be. I want, I want a golden crown. I want, I want, or, or I want my mansion. I want my mansion in heaven. Father, use me more. Father, show me where I can be of service. In the name of Jesus. Say, and you will serve the Lord your God. Elijah finds a way to serve God. He finds a way to, to prove God. He knows how to serve God properly. That thou shalt serve the Lord your God, and he will bless you. There is a blessing waiting for you. There is a blessing waiting for the household who serve God. There is a blessing waiting for children who serve God. There is blessing waiting for everyone that serve God. The Lord will bless your water. The Lord will bless your bread. He will take sickness away. Say, my father, I have decided to serve you all the days of my life. I have decided to serve you all the days of my life. Any sickness that will hinder me, Father, take it away from me. Any sickness that will hinder me, O oh Lord, from serving you more and more, take that sickness away from me. Take that affliction away from me. Any sickness that will say, my Father, I have dedicated my children to you, to serve you. Any sickness in their life that will not make my children to be fit for your service. Bury that sickness now. Uproot it now. Uproot affliction. Even inheritance. Anything whatsoever. Idol. Pride. Lucifer. Parasite. Satan. Father, take them out of my life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The Lord will take away from thee all sickness. And we put none of evil disease of Egypt, which thou knowest upon thee, but we will lay it upon those who hate you. Don't be an hater. There are a sickness that comes to the head of those who hate. Be very careful. Father, we just want to thank you. We want to bless you for who you are. We thank you for all, not over the truth for us. We thank you for revealing the truth for us. Lord, I pray for anointing for service. Over everyone here, both young and old, anointing to serve you properly, anointing to serve you the way you want to be served, anointing for service all the days of our life. Release it now. Release it now. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, I don't have husband. I don't have children. That is why you don't find anything to do for God anymore because of husband. What if you have a husband and he doesn't love you? You better fall in love with your God and face your God squarely and let God be God in your life. When you serve God, nobody can stop your blessing. No, no million cause can stop it. God cannot trade those who are serving him with anything. He knows that they are representing him. And without them, the promise we say, people will say there is no God. That's why when he sends you on errand, he can send your money, he can send your talent, he can send your wisdom, he can send your beauty. Use it for the Lord. Don't say, oh, me, I'm too, too elegant for this kind of thing. When I say service, I didn't mean this kind of thing now. Not me. I attended a retreat. Sometimes they go back home and professor. There is no table to put beans. So they put every clothes on their head. They use their head as table. Professor. 
professor. And here, if you see, if you say, oh, go and wash place, they send me to wash place. No. When those people are there, why must I be? Let's hire some Kokoye to be doing it for us. That's how Kokoye took all the blessing of the house of God away. You need to wake up. Wake up and grab your blessing. Grab your portion. Say, my portion of service will not be taken away from me. My portion shall not be taken away. In the name of Jesus. My portion shall not be taken away. In the name of Jesus. Malika Tasindaya Ahuma Sinda. Declare loud and clear. God who answers by fire. The God whom I serve day and night. It is time for you to answer in every area in my life. Oh God who answers by fire. Answer me by fire. Don't let enemy mock me. Don't let unbelievers say, Where is my God? Don't let those who are consulting idols. Don't let them prevail over my life and family. God of Elijah, answer me by fire. Defend me. Heal me, prosper me, open way for me, give me breakthrough, fight my battles for me, distress my mocker. In the name of Jesus. I pray for everyone here. That that's what you are doing that is a service unto the Lord. Shall be holy to the Lord. The Lord shall accept it. As he accepted the service of Elijah, as he accepted the way Elijah repaired the altar and do a correct service. May your service be acceptable unto the Lord in the name of Jesus. Every sickness presented in this place tonight, every infirmity, every satanic plantation in any of the body of anyone here, in the name that is above every other name, let fire consume it in Jesus' name. Let all the infirmity in the body, infirmity in the blood, infirmity in the bone, Infirmity in the hive, infirmity in the brain, infirmity in the womb. Let them dry to the root in Jesus' name. Let the Spirit of God take away every sickness away from the body of everyone here in the name of Jesus. Let the sickness of Egyptian go now back to Egyptian in the name of Jesus. The Lord God will heal us without surgery. Let him be a God tonight. Let him be your God. Let him be a God. Let all those children that are sick be healed in Jesus' name. Let all that in affliction, let that affliction dry up in Jesus' name. Let all the house Satan has built in your body, in your life, let his house become desolate in Jesus' name. Let the poison of Satan dry up in the name of Jesus. Father, bless your children water. We have brought it to you. We know you will bless it as you have promised. Make a ma'ili masinda. Yes, you are the most high. Bless your children water. Bless their bread. Bless their body. Bless their home. Bless their marriage. Bless the work of their hand. Bless them in going out. Bless them in coming in. Bless them at the hour of night. Bless our children. Bless our home. Bless our city. Bless our state. Bless our country. Bless our leader. Bless us, O Lord. In the name of Jesus. Let the blessing of God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob rest upon the head of everyone here. In the name of Jesus. Let all the cause of infirmity, cause of affliction, cause of rejection, cause of evil disease, let the cause be broken forever in Jesus' name. As you sleep tonight, the precious blood of Jesus be a shield around us, around our children, around our home, in the name of Jesus. As mountains surround Jerusalem, so the angel of God encamp around his people now, in the name of Jesus. Wonderful Lord, we can't thank you enough, because you are a, you are a super God. You are excellent God. Yes, Makapasindaya. You are God who answered by fire. Over the case presented here, over the difficult issue here, answer by fire and disgrace all our problems in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you all the glory. Let us continue to serve you more and more, and you continue to glorify yourself more and more, more and more, and at the end, eternal life, eternal life, eternal life shall be our reward in heaven, and on earth we shall reign, we shall reign, you shall reign, we shall reign, all our children shall reign in the name of Jesus. 
thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' awesome name, we have prayed. Amen, amen, and amen in Jesus' name. We do not have night program tomorrow, but we do have morning at 5.30 a.m. for Yoruba and English at 6 a.m. And the Lord will be dear to bless every life again and again. Glory be to his name. This is Mongiga Segundugu Prayer Line Ministry. Soul is our target and heaven is our destination. Please join us and journey with us. You will not regret it in the name of Jesus. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you peace and defend you and protect you. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen in Jesus' name.